Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. La hal ve la kuvvete illa billahil aliyil adzim. Rabbena atina fid dunya hasenaten ve fil ahireti hasenaten ve vakin azabin nar. The author, Rahimullah, is going to go on to talk about or to cover the chapter Babu Mandubat is Salati, the, uh, the virtuous prayers are the prayers that are, derm, are, are deemed virtuous, but what he's referring to here are the prayers that are mundub to perform either after the obligatory prayers or before the obligatory prayers. And so he begins by saying, وَيُسْتَحَبُّ لِلْمُكَلَّفِي أَنْ يَتَنَفَّلَ قَبْلَ الظُّهْرِ وَبَعْدَهَا And the first thing that the author mentions is that it is mustahab, that it is virtuous, are encouraged lil mukallafi for the person who is mukallaf, for the person who is legally responsible. And yatanafala qabla dhuhri wa badaha to pray to to pray nafila qabla dhuhri wa badaha to pray nafila prayers before the dhuhr prayer and after the dhuhr prayer. So according to the Maliki scholars, uh, it is recommended for a person to pray some extra prayers before the Dhuhr, before the Dhuhr prayer and after the Dhuhr prayer. According to the Malikis, any any Nafila prayer that we pray or any Mandub, same thing, are going to be prayed in twos, whereas the Hanafis pray them in four. So any as uh, any type of nafila that you're going to pray, it's going to be prayed in twos. So if you want to pray four, then you pray two rakahs, you say salam, and then you pray another two rakahs. Uh, another interesting point that the ulama make is that there is uh, a wisdom behind having uh, performing the nafilas before certain prayers and after certain prayers. The To pray them before is in order for a person to prepare for his prayer. For example, one will notice the difference when they have the time to enter the mosque, pray two uh, rakahs of nafila before they pray their fard, they will realize that their mind and their spirit is in mode for the prayer, contrary to a person who just walks inside of the masjid late and enters the prayer directly. Then a lot of the time his mind is still occupied with things uh, that were on his mind before the prayer. So the hikmah of praying before the obligatory prayer is to prepare oneself uh, to meet with his Lord. In terms of after the prayer, after the, pr uh, after the prayer, the wisdom for praying the nafila is in order to help make up for all of the deficiencies that you had during your prayer. So if you were thinking about things in your prayer uh, that had to do with worldly things or you had some type of shortage in your prayer, the nafila. Uh, is used to kind of patch up the prayer in order to uh, bring it back to its uh, higher level of uh, of status with Allah. So that's what he means by we used to have in Mukallafi and Yatanafala Kabla Zuhri wa Badaha wa Kabla al Asri. Wa Kabla al Asri is well praying Sunnah before. The Asr prayer is also recommended, but he does not mention afters because there's no as there is no uh, nafila between Asr and Maghrib. So according to us, there is it is not permissible to pray nafila between Asr and Maghrib. So that's why he mentions wa qabl al Asri, and as I mentioned before, that uh, a person can either pray two or four. And then he says, وَبَعْدَ الْمَغْرِبِ And after Maghrib. So the reason why he says, قَبْلَ الْعَصْرِ وَبَعْدَ الْمَغْرِبِ Because after Asr, until Maghrib, there is no nafila. So we do not pray nafila before the Maghrib prayer. But instead, once the Maghrib prayer goes off, or the adhan for the Maghrib goes off, or until the time for Maghrib enters, then we go directly into the obligatory prayer. Now, contrary to the rest of them, in Maghrib, after Maghrib, it is recommended to increase as much uh, nafila as possible. And according to some of the books, he mentioned that praying six rakahs of nafila, six, not four, or two, six rakahs after Maghrib, 
is uh, is virtuous, and for this reason, the author says, "وَيُسْتَحَبُ الزِّيَادَةُ to النَّفْلِ بَعْدَ الْمَغْرِبِ," and it is recommended to pray more nafila prayers after maghrib. So the ulama mention that. Uh, Praying six is highly recommended in that it was the practice of the Salaf. So that's what he means by what used to have ziyadah to fin nafli ba'd al maghribi wa hadha kulluhu laysa bi wajibin. And here the author is going to clarify that yani wa hadha kulluhu laysa bi wajibin. It is not obligatory, it is not something that somebody must perform, but instead, uh, but rather it is recommended. So he makes that clarification. Although it's virtuous, it is not considered obligatory, and that's the meaning of wa hadha kulluhu laysa bi wajibin, wa inma huwa ala tariq al istihbabi. But in fact, or rather, it is according to. I mean, it is deemed as istihbab. It is uh, considered virtuous or encouraged. Wa kadarika yustahabu duha. And then he's going to go on to mention. Some other things that are mustahab that are not necessarily done directly after the the prayers, but they are mustahab in their own right, meaning that they don't they're not uh, performed after or before a prayer. They're just by their very being mustahab. And the first one that he mentions is salatu duha, and salatu duha is the rakaz that a person prays for the sunrise prayer. So after the sun has totally risen. After the Fajr prayer, so a person prays Fajr and then waits until the sun rises, then it is recommended uh, that a person uh, pray his Salatul Duha. And it is a very virtuous prayer. And if a person has a habit of it, they will see much benefit in praying it. So praying the Duha like any other thing, is done in twos. And it can be done anywhere between sunrise and before Dhuhr enters. So it doesn't have to be done early in the morning, although doing it early is better. But it is recommended to, I mean, the the area of its recommendation or the timing of its recommendation is anywhere between sunrise and uh before the time of Dhuhr enters. Then he's going to mention what Tarawihu, what Tarawihu, as everybody knows, is the uh, Tarawih of Ramadan, praying the Tarawih. And according to the practice that uh, of the later ulama, they mentioned that it is 20 rakahs. And there was a period of time where it was 36. And uh, as there was a period of time when it was 20, and originally it was eight rakahs, but in the time of Umar anhu, he made it twenty rakahs. And so, regardless of what people pray it as, whether people are praying it in eight, as eight or twenty, yeah, and it's nothing for people to dispute about uh, so much as if one is doing it correct and the other is doing it wrong. But the practice of the uh, since the time of the companions had been uh, and the people who came after had been uh, has been that they've been observing 20 rakahs the reason why it became 20 rakahs at one point and still is until this very day or 36 at a period of uh, at one period of time amongst the earlier muslims was not in order it wasn't necessarily making tarawi longer the same amount of time was taken in recita recitation, but they realized that standing for eight rakahs was becoming difficult on the people. And so what they did is they were reading the same amount of Quran that they would read in eight rakahs, but they made it into 20 rakahs so that the, so that the standing of the people would be lighter. Whereas if you're reading the amount in eight rakahs, then... The, the the standing becomes very long and many people cannot bear it, the young, the old, and so on and so forth. So to make it easy, they made it 20 rakahs and at some point of time, as I mentioned, they had it also as 36. But at the end of the day, whatever anybody 
uh, whatever masjid is praying 20 or whatever masjid is praying 8 or whatever masjid happened to be praying 36 or all uh, not doing anything that's contrary to the sunnah. Although the scholars of the Madikiya insisted that it should be 20 and that has been the practice mentioned in the books of uh, the Madikiya. وَتَحِيَّةُ masjid وَتَحِيَّةُ masjid The next mandub that he mentions is وَتَحِيَّةُ masjid And تَحِيَّةُ masjid means the two rakahs that a person prays when they enter the masjid. But these prayers uh, are all, this prayer is only recommended if they enter in the, into the masjid in a time that nafila, that praying nafila is not prohibited. Like between Asr and Maghrib, it's prohibited to pray uh, a nafila just like it is uh, prohibited to pray during the rising of the sun or during the khutbah of the imam when the imam is given khutbah it's also prohibited to pray uh, nafila so during this time if a person were to walk in the masjid then they would sit down and they wouldn't pray to hit in masjid to hit in masjid is recommended when praying nafila is permissible also, in our ma in our school, if you were to forget to pray the Tahiyyat al-Masjid and you were to sit down, the ruling of it being nafila does not expire. Meaning, even if you were to sit down and you were to remember, then you were to stand up and pray. Uh, it's still recommended to stand up and pray the Tahiyyat al-Masjid. Then he goes on to mention, وَالشَّفْعُ وَأَقَلُّهُ رَكْعَتَانِ Praying the Shafi'i is also from the things that are recommended. The Shafi'i is the prayer that we pray, or the two rak'atain that we pray after Maghrib, that is followed by the Witr. It should be clear here, or should be made clear here, that the as, uh, for the Hanafis, they don't have anything called a Shafi'i. All they have is witr. For the for the Hanafis, they pray three rakahs a witr. But according to the Malikis and the Shafi'is, we split these three rakahs, praying the first two, and then pray and then saying assalamu alaikum and then standing up and praying witr. So in our school, our witr is only one rakah and it is not three rakahs. So we have the Shafi'i. The Shafi'i is after you pray the Isha. You're going to stand up and pray two rak'ahs, and then you're going to say assalamu alaikum, and then you're going to stand up without speaking, and you're going to pray the witr. And the witr he's going to mention uh, in the following passage. So it should be understood that the shafi in our madhab is two, and then it is followed up by wit by witr. So that's why he says was shafu, was shafu wal aqalu wal aqaluhu rak'atani. Yani the Shaf'i prayer is originally two rakahs, and that's the least amount that the Shaf'i can be prayed. For example, you can make your Shaf'i four, you can make it six, you can make it eight. There is no, there is no limit to the amount of rakahs that you can make for Shaf'i. All that is important is that you follow it up by witr. So if a person wants to pray after their Isha, they want to pray their Shaf'i in the witr, they can pray two rakahs, and then add the uh, add the the witr right after it or a person can pray two then do the witr or can pray six then pray the witr or pray eight all the way up until he uh, intends to pray his witr and that's how the shafi and the witr is done in the maliki school so two rakahs assalamu alaikum then stand up and we pray witr so that's what he means by wa shaf wa shafu and the least amount that the Shaf'i can be is Rak'atani, two Rak'as, with a Salam. Wal Witru. Then he goes on to mention wit Witru, and we explained what Witr is. And here he mentions that it's Mustahab, since we are in the section of discussing the thing, and the prayers that are virtuous or Nafilas. So Wal Witru, and we describe how we join the Shaf'u and the, wit uh, and the Witr. And That's why he says, Wal Witru, 
Rak'atun ba'duhu, a ba'd shaf'i. And the witr is that rak'ah, that single rak'ah that comes after the shaf'i. And he says, wa huwa sunnatun mu'akkadatun. And the witr is a sunnah mu'akkadatun. It is a stressed sunnah. And according to some of the other schools, like the Hanafi school, it's considered wajib. And so it is considered something that is uh, obligatory. And so it is something that we should observe diligently. Although in our school it's only sunnah mu'akkadatun, but... A sunnah mu'akkadah is, very, is, a, is a highly stressed sunnah, which means that we should make the habit of making sure to pray our witr as well as our shafi'i. And then he says, وَالْقِرَاءَةُ فِي الشَّعْفِي وَالْوِتْرِ جَهْرًا Yani, it is also recommended that we pray the shafi'i in witr jahran. According to the Maliki school, in reality, all nafila prayers done in the night time are recommended to be prayed out loud. So if you're praying nafila after Maghrib, it's recommended to pray them out loud. If you're praying and any nafila in the night time, it's recommended for us to pray out loud. And what do we mean by out loud? Enough that one can hear himself. Although if one is in the masjid where other people are going to be disturbed, then it is better to read them quietly in order not to disturb the people in the masjid. وَيَقْرَأُوا فِي الشَّفْعِ فِي الرَّكْأَةِ الْأُولَى بِأُمِّ الْقُرْآنِ وَسَبِّ حِسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى وَفِي الثَّانِيَةِ بِأُمِّ الْقُرْآنِ وَقُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Then now he's going to clarify what is recommended to be read in the shaf'i and the witr. So he says وَيَقْرَأُوا أَيْ وَيَقْرَأُوا نَدْبًا It is mandub فِي الشَّفْعِ In the shaf'i prayer in the first rak'ah to read the verse Sabbi Hismi Rabbikal A'la. So in the first rakah of Shaf'i, it is recommended to read Sabbi Hismi Rabbikal A'la, meaning reading uh, the Surah Sabbi Hismi Rabbikal A'la all the way to the end. Wa fi thaniyati bi umil Quran. And in the second rakah, it is uh, it is recommended to read Quliya Ayyul Kafirun, to read with the Fatiha Quliya Ayyul Kafirun. And then when we and then when you after saying assalamu alaikum, then when one goes to the witr, it is recommended in the witr he says bi umil Quran wa qulhu Allahu ahad wa muawwidatini. Yani it is recommended in the witr to read the Fatiha obviously wa qulhu Allahu ahad and the muawwidatain. The muawwidatain means the two ver the two last ayats that. I mean the two, two last verses that begin with Qul. So Qul ya al kafirun wa kul nas. So to summarize, when you're praying your Shaf'i, it is recommended to read in the first rak'ah the Surah Al-Fatiha with Sabih Hismi Rabbikal A'la. And then in the second rak'ah bi Um Al-Quran with uh, meaning the Fatiha wa kul ya al kafirun. And then in the Witr, the Fatiha, the Qul Huwallahu Ahad, and the Mu'awwidatain, the two verses, the two uh, surahs that end with Qul. Qul ya ayu al-kafirun wa Qul Huwallahu Ahad. Or my bad, Qul a'udhu bi nas wa Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq. The Mu'awwidatain, meaning the two surahs in which we used to seek refuge in Allah. That's what they mean by the Al-Mu'awwidataini. Then he goes on to say, وَرَقْعَةَ الْفَجْرِ مِنَ مِنَ الرَّغَائِبِ وَقِيلَ مِنَ السُّنِّ وَمِنَ السُّنَنِ Then he's going to mention the two رَقْعَةَ الْفَجْرِ The two رَقْعَةَ that you pray that you do before you pray your Salat al-Subh. They're called رَقْعَةَ الْفَجْرِ The two Sunnah prayers that you pray before you pray the obligatory prayer. And he says that they are مِنَ الرَّغَائِبِ Yani, the ulama of the Malikiyah say that the rak'ate al-fajri is somewhere between being mustahab and sunnah. So ragha'ib is a technical term that means less than sunnah but more than, more than just mustahab. So it's somewhere in between and the rak'ate al-fajri and the two rak'as of, 
of Fajr that are prayed are the only is the only prayer that is considered from the Raghiba. So Raghiba is something that is particular to the two rak'as of uh, to the two rak'as of Fajr. And as I mentioned, it is between it is less than Sunnah but higher than Mustahab, somewhere in between. And Raghiba generally means something that is 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 highly recommended. Because the Prophet ﷺ is known to have said, Rak'at al-Fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. The Prophet ﷺ said that the two uh, Fajr Rak'ahs before the obligatory prayer are better than the dunya, all of the dunya and what is in it. Are better than the dunya and all that is in it. So, the author, although the author mentions, Waqila min sunani And some of the scholars say that it is Sunnah. Then he mentions Then he is going to clarify uh, how these how the rakata al fajri should be performed. And he says and in both of the rak'as bi umil Quran faqat. We should only read the Surah Al Fatiha in the first rak'ah and Surah Al Fatiha in the second rak'ah. And then he says, Wallahu A'lam. And that is the end of the section that talks about the prayers that are recommended to be performed by those who are legally responsible for the Sharia or even technically those who are not even responsible. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.